The Siege of Moulton was a prolonged contest between the city and state of Moulton and the British East India Company. The siege lasted between 19 April 1848, when a rebellion in the city against a ruler imposed by the East India Company precipitated the Second Anglo-Sikh War, and the 22nd of January 1849, when the last defenders surrendered. Background Moulton had been captured and incorporated into the Sikh Empire of Ranjit Singh in 1818. In 1845, although the population was almost entirely Muslim, it was ruled by a Hindu vassal, Ju and Mulraj. In that year, the first Anglo-Sikh war broke out, and was won by the British East India Company. There was an uneasy peace for three years during which Mulraj attempted to maintain practical independence while being nominally subject to the East India Company. In 1848, Moulton had a population of 80,000. It was the centre of trade for a wide region, and was renowned for its wealth. There were large stores of spices, silks and valuables. Early in 1848, the newly appointed commissioner in the Punjab, Sir Frederick Curry, demanded that Mulraj pay duties and taxes previously paid to the central Durba of the Sikh Empire and now in arrears. Mulraj attempted to forestall a complete annexation of Moulton by abdicating in favour of his son. Curry nevertheless decided to impose a compliant Sikh ruler, Sadar Khan Singh, who was to be accompanied by a British political agent, Patrick Van Zagnew. The revolt in Moulton. On 18 April, Van Zagnew and another officer, Lieutenant Anderson from the East India Company's Bombay Army, arrived outside Moulton with a small escort of Gurkhas. The next day, Mulraj conducted Khan Singh and the two British officers to the citadel and handed over the keys, with no sign of hostility. As the two officers began to ride out of the citadel, a soldier from Mulraj's army attacked Van Zagnew. This may have been the sign for a concerted attack, as a mob surrounded and attacked them. Mulraj's troops either stood by or joined the mob. Both officers were wounded, and they and Khan Singh retired to a mosque outside the city, where Anderson wrote a plea for help. A dispatch rider carried it to Curry in Lahore, while a second took a copy via a different route, across the Indus River. During the night, most of Van Zagnew's escort left. Next morning, the mob pushed Khan Singh aside and hacked the two British officers to death. Mulraj had probably not been a party to the conspiracy among his own troops. He nevertheless regarded himself as committed to rebellion by their actions. He presented Van Zagnew's head to Khan Singh and told him to take it back to Curry. The Battle of Kinirai, the British political agent in Banu, Lieutenant Herbert Edwards, took the first steps to suppress Mulraj's revolt. He intercepted the second copy of Van Zagnew's letter to Curry, and immediately began to concentrate troops. He, and other junior British officers were to be frustrated by Curry in Lahore, who proposed to do nothing during the hot weather and monsoon seasons. This was partly for reasons of economy and lack of preparation, but he was supported by the Governor-General of Bengal, Lord Dalhousie and the Commander-in-Chief of the Bengal Army, Sir Hugh Gough, who did not wish to expose European troops to a campaign during the harsh weather. Meanwhile, Mulraj was reinforced by several other regiments of the Khalsa, the former army of the Sikh Kingdom, which rebelled or deserted. He also took other measures to strengthen his defences, digging up guns which had previously been buried and enlisting more troops. In early June, Edwards began to lead an army against Moulton. On 18 June, his leading troops crossed the Chenab River on a ferry boat. They were engaged by Mulraj's artillery and forced to take cover for several hours. Mulraj's infantry and cavalry began to advance but Edwards was reinforced by two regiments of the former Khalsa under Colonel Van. Courtland, disambiguation needed. An Anglo-Indian soldier of fortune, Van Courtland's artillery caused heavy losses among the Multany troops and Edwards's Pashtuns counter-attacked. Mulraj's forces retreated to Moulton, having suffered 500 casualties and lost six guns. 
Sher Singh's defection. Once Curry learned of this victory, he at last ordered a comparatively small force from the East India Company's Bengal army under General Wish to begin the siege of Multan, as it was too small to encircle the city. Curry decided to reinforce the Man Edwards with a substantial detachment of the Khalsa under Sher Singh at Tarawala. The appointment of Sher Singh alarmed many junior political agents, as his father, Chattar Singh at Tarawala, was apparently openly preparing to revolt in Hazara to the north of the Punjab. Despite warnings, Curry nevertheless ordered a detachment from Chattar Singh's army under his second in command, Jundial Singh to reinforce Sher Singh. This allowed John Dial Singh and other officers to influence Sher Singh and spread disaffection among his regiments. At this stage the besiegers consisted of Wish's division, Edward Assis Irregulars, a contingent from the Muslim state of Bahawalpur and Sher Singh's force. On 14 September, Sher Singh openly rebelled against the East India Company. This left the East India Company's forces too weak to maintain the siege, and they were forced to retreat. Most of Edwardus's troops and the Bahawalpur troops dispersed to their homes. Sher Singh and Mulraj nevertheless were not prepared to cooperate. The siege, late in November, which was reinforced by a substantial force from the East India Company's Bombay Army. Some observers claimed that the sepoys of the Bombay contingent, being of generally lower caste than those of the Bengal army, were more willing and skilled at comparatively menial tasks such as digging trenches. Wishes combined force amounted to 32,000, of which 15,000 were from the British army or European troops of the Bengal and Bombay armies. He also had 150 pieces of artillery, many of which were heavy guns or mortars. It was comparatively easy to supply this large force, as Moulton lay near the Indus River, and steamships could bring supplies some way up the river and to within a short distance of the city. Inside the city, Mulraj commanded 12,000 troops, with 54 guns and 12 mortars. On 27 December, Wish ordered four columns of troops to attack the suburbs. Mulraje's forces were driven back into the city, and Wish's force set up batteries 500 yards from the city walls. Under cover of their fire, breaching batteries were set up only 80 yards from the walls and created two breaches in them while causing great damage in the city. On 30 December, the main magazine in the citadel exploded, killing 800 of the defenders. Mulraj nevertheless maintained his fire and sent a defiant message to Wish, stating that he still had enough powder to last a year. He attempted to mount a sortie against the besiegers on 31 December but this was driven back. Wish ordered a general assault on 2 January 1849. The attacker successfully scaled the breaches, and the battle became a bloody house-to-house -house fight in the city, in which many defenders and civilians were killed indiscriminately. Wish ordered the civilians to be herded into the main square. He may have intended to spare them from further fighting but the action of corralling them was also accompanied by further casualties. With the fall of the city, only the already scarred citadel remained, but it held out for another fortnight against heavy bombardment. On 18 January, Wish's sappers exploded three mines under its walls, causing heavy losses and destroying large sections of its walls. Mulraj offered to surrender if his life was spared, but Wish insisted on unconditional surrender, and on the 22nd of January, Mulraj gave himself up with 550 men. Aftermath, Corporal John Ryder of the Bombay Fusiliers later wrote of the city after the siege, the British gained vast quantities of loot. Mulraje's treasury was worth £3 million, a huge sum for the time. There was also much looting in the town, by both British and Indian soldiers. With the fall of Multan, Wish's army was able to reinforce the main Bengal army force under Sir Hugh Goff. Wish's heavy guns were decisive at the Battle of Gujarat, which effectively broke Sher Singh's and Chattar Singh's armies and ended the war. Mulraj was placed on trial for the murders of Anzagnu and Anderson. 
He was cleared of premeditated murder, but was found guilty of being an accessory after the fact, in that he had rewarded the murderers and openly used the deaths as pretext for rebellion. Mulraj was sentenced to death, but the sentence was later commuted to exile for life. In August 1849, the Indus and Chenab rivers overflowed, and the heavily damaged citadel was washed away, eventually resembling an island of mud amidst the floods. Order of Battle British Regiment 3rd King's Own Light Dragoons 9th Queen's Royal Light Dragoons 14th The King's Light Dragoons 6th Queen's Light Dragoons 10th Foot 24th Foot 29th Foot 32nd Foot, 60th Foot 1st Battalion, 61st Foot, British Indian Army Regiments 1st Bengal Light Cavalry, 5th Bengal Light Cavalry, 6th Bengal Light Cavalry, 8th Bengal Light Cavalry, 3rd Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 9th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 11th Bengal Irregular Cavalry, 14th Bengal Irregular Cavalry. 2nd European Light Infantry, 8th Bengal Native Infantry, 15th Bengal Native Infantry, 20th Bengal Native Infantry, 25th Bengal Native Infantry, 30th Bengal Native Infantry, 31st Bengal Native Infantry, 36th Bengal Native Infantry, 45th Bengal Native Infantry, 46th Bengal Native Infantry. 51st Bengal Native Infantry, 52nd Bengal Native Infantry, 56th Bengal Native Infantry, 69th Bengal Native Infantry, 70th Bengal Native Infantry, 72nd Bengal Native Infantry, 25th Mountain Battery.